Morning guys, good morning from me and my matcha. This is the first time trying the vanilla matcha from Perfected and I must say definitely approved. Today is the 14th of September and we are going, we, you and I are going on our first international solo trip. Technically when I came into the UK for my registration exams and all that, obviously that was my solo trip but I wouldn't say that was really a trip because I was for exams and settling down here and all that. This is my first international solo trip. I'm going to Europe on my freaking own. I think the bit that really scares me is my safety. It's not that I'm worried about figuring out things. I'm the one who generally figures out everything. It's just the safety aspect of it, which really, really gets to me. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be hyper vigilant, overstimulated, which I usually am, just 10 steps more. And we shall see. You can actually tell that the introduction of this video has started on a note where I'm worried about everything. Yeah, we'll reflect on it at the end of it. We are off to Belgium. I am super, super, super excited. I haven't made any freaking itinerary. The plan is to sit on the train and do that so let's get to the train station look at that freaking sunrise over there it looks so stunning I don't know if this camera is picking it up or not what a way to be saying goodbye to London checked in just now and I went to grab a whole lot of food from Pret and they gave me a free cookie saying it's a cookie on the house. I don't know if it's a perk of traveling alone or were they feeling bad for me but I'm glad that the holiday is off to a good start. I think I'm starting to get excited now so we'll see how it goes. We have officially arrived, not we, I have officially arrived in Belgium. It's my first time in Belgium. I think this train station is a bit further away from where I'll be staying. So I think I might just take a cab. Safety first. All right, let's do a quick room tour. This is me. First solo trip, first solo trip, woohoo. This is the room. I think they've got a nice spacious cupboard in here. There's a cute coffee station on the side. I'm going to be making my matcha. Bed for one. And there's a big TV. I don't think I'm going to be watching anything over there. Nice working desk station over here. If I want to edit something or whatever. Views are... Okay. I'll take that. Ooh. That's cute. Okay, got a hairdryer over here. You know what that's for. Alright, nice mirror. I, I quite like this tiny mirror for my makeup and all that jazz. There's a shower in here. Pretty spacious. Oh my god, this is a bit bougie. They've got toiletries from Burma in Paris. That's a bit fancy. Officially, my solo trip has begun. I'm gonna quickly change, get ready, and then go out for some lunch. Alrighty, I'm fully ready. We are off to explore Brussels. So I'm just going to go grab some lunch. A lot of you girlies told me that there are a lot of restaurants in Brussels shut very early, around 2.30 p.m. And then they open up again later on for dinner. I did look up just now and the restaurant I want to go to shuts at 2.30 p.m. I understand that a lot of restaurants in Europe do shut post lunch and then they open again for dinner. But 2.30 p.m. is a little early. I just have to find a restaurant nearby to me for this meal and then we'll figure out for evening and all that. Later. I might have literally checked 10 times if I've got everything in my bag or not, but off we go finally. Hey 
I don't know how comfortable I am with everyone looking at me filming myself. Okay, I was at the restaurant and when the waiter got me the bill and then he asked me, oh, is it your first time in Brussels? And I'm like, yeah, it's literally the first place I've walked into after getting off at the train station. So I asked him if he has any recommendations in Brussels. And obviously I could recognize his accent that he is Italian. And then he goes like, well, he was so unfiltered. He said, oh, I hate the city. I've been here for four months. I just don't like it. I have no recommendations for you. Great. And then he said, oh, I'm from Rome. You know, it's, this city is nothing compared to that. I fully agree. I've been to Rome twice. Given a choice, I would go back to Rome. And I asked him, how come you've ended up in Brussels instead of being in Rome? And he said, oh, you know, Rome is great for tourists, but for localized, it's a difficult city to live in. And I said, I can relate, you know, because I live in London and London is amazing for tourists, but people who live there, it is difficult. Yeah, it's just not an easy city to live in. You have to really, really work hard towards it. We got into a bit of a conversation. Then he said that, okay, if it's your first time in Brussels, I think you should speak to my manager because he's from Brussels and he'll be able to give you recommendations, which is very sweet of him. So basically, then I went to the washroom and then he must have had a conversation with the manager. So while I was leaving, the manager is like, oh, you want some recommendations from Brussels? And then he very politely gave me a whole list of things to do and day trips from here and all that, which is so freaking sweet. And then I said bye to him and also to the Italian chap who was kind enough to have had a conversation with me. That was my first conversation since having come into Brussels. Yeah, he didn't make me feel like awkward in any way, which is so nice nice and that's something I really appreciate especially like I'm always a bit guarded when I'm on my own and I'm having a conversation with basically a guy being a woman I'm obviously worried about my safety and you know what I mean like the gut feeling and the sixth sense is always strong and you could tell that this is a really sweet guy yeah anyway that's just a random bit of story I wanted to tell I'm going to continue walking I just sat down here at a random park because it's a 40 minutes walk from Sofitel to the Grand Place it seems very nice here in park you know it's an amazing place to sit and people watch I think Literally, all that I've been seeing are chocolates and diamonds. Absolutely every girl's delight. Alright, so this is the grand place. Okay, done and dusted. <laughs> Let's go to the pissing man. I can't believe this is what I've come all the way to see. Okay, now I've entered a chocolate here. At least if not Belgian diamonds, I can afford Belgian chocolate, so that's what I'm going to get. I'll try these ones. These are basically oranges coated in Belgian chocolate. Mmm! I get the hype. Is that a special birthday? No, but she's special. Like everyone who works at our company. They're family to us. Uh, I told my mother that's almost my ready and good to go i'll do a proper fit check when i'm outside i had put up a tiktok and i asked my tiktok girlies if you had any recommendations for brussels and so many of you said that i need to get out of brussels and go to bruges so that's what we're doing today i'm off on a day trip to bruges i've looked up a cute spot so that i can have a nice quiet chill day this whole trip is just to slow down i'm not in a rush to see 100 museums and take off touristy places so that's what the plan is i'm going to take you along with me of course 
The route to go to Bruges is that it's an hour away by train. So I need to make my way to Brussels train station, figure out train and all that. I've not taken a train from Brussels yet. I don't know what announcements are in French, Dutch, German, Italian. So we'll just figure it out. Take you guys along with me and see how it goes. I have officially arrived in Bruges. I got myself a pumpkin spiced oat latte. This is my first autumnal drink. So I'm welcoming autumn in Bruges actually on my solo trip. I booked my tickets online. So it's an hour long train journey from Brussels to Bruges. It was pretty straightforward to book it on trainline.com. And now we're off to exploring Bruges. It's such a quaint, cute little town. I think I quite like it more than Brussels already. So I'll do my fit check here for you guys. This is the dress that I wore actually during my Lake Como trip. It's from Abercrombie. Sweater is from And Other Stories. Coat is from Ted Baker. Ballerinas are from Flabulous. And my socks are from Free People. Look at this cute little view. Oh my god, I absolutely love this town already. This is so freaking amazing. Okay, I'm so glad you guys recommended this. I am sold already. Like, what the heck? This looks like the Belgian Cotswold. I don't know, I sound like those Indian moms comparing everything in Europe back home. So I'm comparing everything in Europe back in UK. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is the town center. It's called the Marketplace, Market Square, City Center. I think I like it more than the one in Brussels. It's got a lot more character and vibe to it and much less crowded. Yeah, pretty, look at that. I wanted to show you guys the reality of me painting. These containers in which I fill water, this is actually the milk container from the hotel. I kind of empty the milk, I don't drink animal milk anyway. And these are my lens cases, so I kind of fill that with water to be able to paint. So you gotta find makeshift things to make it work. Very proud of myself for having spent an entire afternoon with this view. Absolutely stunning view. I think the plan now is to go find a restaurant where I can grab something to eat and drink, and then I'll head back to Brussels. Morning guys, today is my final day in Brussels in Belgium. I've got my train late at night. So I'm going to just finish off packing because the checkout is at 12 p.m. So for the next couple of minutes, you're just going to watch a montage of me packing. And the next time you hear me speaking, I am going to have a bit of a reflection on my solo trip. And obviously, as I'm all alone, I'm blasting Taylor Swift while packing. Okay, this is this is a bit of a funny chair. 
swaying me on its own. It's like those rocking chairs kids have. Okay, morning guys. Today is my final day in Belgium. It's quite a gloomy and cloudy day. So I think I timed my holiday perfectly because the two full days I was here, it was bright and sunny. It was autumnal weather where there was chill in the air, but at least there were bright blue sunny skies. Today is a gloomy day. I have the whole of the day and then later in the evening is my train back to London. So the plan is to have a late checkout and then I'm just going to stroll around in the area, check out some cute shops, have my final lunch in a restaurant pretty close to the hotel. So by the time this vlog comes out, obviously I'll be out of Brussels so I can give away where I'm staying. I did not tag my location while I was posting live updates. That's just because I'm worried for my safety as a woman. So even if I was posting me being in Bruges or in Brussels, I would post the places once I was away from there. Yeah, it's just things to keep in mind when you're solo traveling as a female. Even when I'm with my partner and I'm traveling, I do the exact same things. Even in London, I never live post right then and there when I'm in that location. Probably would post at least four or five hours later. So by then I'm quite far away or somewhere else altogether. That's just my spiel in terms of safety. I wasn't even going to talk about that. The reason I switched on my camera is to do an outro, but also have a bit of a reflection as to how the holiday went and what's my take home message from this holiday and also do a proper breakdown of the cost. So the breakdown of the holiday would be at the end of it. In terms of my holiday in itself, this was a very much last minute solo trip that I planned. The whole reason it happened is because my Schengen visa is expiring in October and I knew I'm not going to renew my Schengen visa after this one. So I just wanted to have this one last hurrah, one last holiday. But then my partner's Schengen visa expired end of August. It was just too short a notice for him to find an appointment and get through the whole shenanigans of applying for visa and getting a visa. I think that was a blessing in disguise because that pushed me to just book that solo holiday. A lot of you do not know this, a year ago when we were in Portugal, I actually booked a solo trip. I booked a week-long holiday to Paris. I think I have footage of that. I never put it out as well. I think I'm going to play that now. Excuse me. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm sorry. Can you please repeat that? <laughs> it's 112 euros for a turn. I'm still unclear. We are booking a seat to where? I'm going to Paris. So your viewers can look forward to your first solo travel vlog. Oh yeah, I didn't never mention that. It's going to be a solo trip. Looking forward to watching it as well. All right, and then after that, literally, I would say a day later, I canceled that holiday because I just I just felt very overwhelmed. I felt like a week is too long and all of that. So swiftly moving from there to now, having done this three-day holiday in Brussels, I definitely think I need more than three days to be able to fully say that, oh, I love solo traveling. I think it took me two days to settle in and be like, okay, I'm on my own. The reason I'm saying that is that if you do not have a partner, then you're used to being on your own and kind of life carries on from there in terms of you going on a holiday. But if you have a partner who you constantly spend time with it's a sudden change so it took me at least two days to adjust that okay I don't have my partner with me I'm on my own because I'm just so used to us chatting about things and us talking about what we're seeing and reflecting on it together or sharing these experiences and suddenly I didn't have that I just had all of this to myself and I had all of these thoughts to myself so it was a drastic change when I was journaling I realized that three days is too short a time for me to realize the value of solo traveling I think I need longer than that at least a couple of days to settle in to the idea of solo traveling and then actually enjoy my holiday it's my learning point i don't think i'm going to do any more short solo trips the second thing is that i'm quite blessed with the fact that i have a partner and i have a partner who sees eye to eye on most things i want to enjoy that you know while we are young and while we can travel together and all of that so i don't know i felt like uh, taking this solo trip was great but given a choice between traveling solo and traveling with my partner i would 100 percent without a doubt in a heartbeat travel with my partner even when we are traveling together I still feel like you know we have our own space we have our own time it's just the whole idea of sharing these experiences together and I have someone to do that with someone I absolutely love someone who's my best friend someone who's been with me for 10 years and I don't know why am I not utilizing that and making myself go on this solo trip I mean it's great for independence and confidence and all that yeah once in a while is great but given a choice between traveling with my partner and going on a solo trip I know a lot of you independent solo girlies are going to come at me for saying this but I just think I would prefer traveling with my partner I feel it's much more enjoyable for me we are able to bounce off ideas with each other there are things that he wants to do which then I get to experience because I wouldn't have booked that on my own if I was on my own and there's things that he gets to do which he wouldn't have done if I wasn't around because those are things that I would do you know what 
I mean, reflecting on this trip is what I realized that I've been with my partner for 10 years. So most of the places we've gone together, I haven't, you know, traveled on my own. So this was the first time I was traveling on my own in a really long time. So I'd kind of forgotten what it feels like to be on your own as a woman. The number of men that have approached me to have a conversation, which they wouldn't do if I was with my partner. I don't like that. I would love to have a conversation with a couple, with a family. Okay, the housekeeping came in and I had to say that I'm checking out so you don't have to clean the room. In terms of the number of men who approached me, I just didn't like that and I felt like, <laughs> leave me alone. I mean, I'm obviously already overstimulated, overly aware that I'm on my own. I just made up new names and new jobs and new places. Other than that, I think it was great. I think it was a good starter in terms of a city break. My take home message would be longer trip. Trip which I go on my own, but maybe then end up meeting my partner in another location. And so basically the holiday ends with us being together. Although I start the holiday on my own. So that's something that's maybe a middle ground I was thinking of. Other than that, I quite enjoyed my time. I would definitely pick Bruges over Brussels. A lot of my TikTok girlies advised me on that, took your advice. Thank you so much for all the recommendations and the tips and everything. Finally, in terms of the breakdown of the holiday, this was the cost of the train ticket. I chose to book a business class ticket for train. It was only £30 difference between the general ticket and the business class. I just didn't want to sit next to a random strange man. I just don't know. In my head, I thought, what if there's a random strange man next to me and for two hours I'm stuck there. I was like £30 more in terms of comfort and safety. So I just Big that obviously if you book a standard one it'll be much cheaper this is the cost of the two day stay in the hotel i'm staying which is sophie Dell in brussels it's a great hotel i have nothing to fault it's just a 40 minutes walk away from where you know the grand place and all of that is i don't mind walking for 40 minutes because on average i walk for 40 minutes each way if i'm in london 40 minutes means i'm walking i'm not taking public transport so i felt fine but it's up to you if you think it's too far away then yeah it's like a 10 minutes cab ride or you can take the public transport as well i just chose to walk with because I think you explore the city better when you're exploring on foot. Then this was the cost of any kind of caps that I did basically from the train station I had luggage to come to the hotel. I will obviously be taking a cab back from here to the train station again. That's the cost of the commute in terms of the Ubers and also the train that I took from Brussels to Bruges and Bruges to Brussels. So that's the whole breakdown of that. And this is the cost of all the food that I ate. I don't think there's anything else. I didn't shop at all for the first time. Oh, I did buy a box of chocolates for Dean, Belgian chocolate. That's the only souvenir. I'm taking back home and me myself <laughs> okay I'm kidding so that's the whole breakdown of the holiday I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and this vlog and I hope it's given you a bit of confidence in terms of going out and doing things on your own I'll be doing a lot more of solo dates in London for my London girlies in terms of solo holiday I don't have any plan for now because my Schengen visa expires in the next couple of weeks and I'm not going to be renewing that watch this space why I'm not renewing that again yeah that's about it hope you're looking after yourself and your loved ones and thank Thank you so much for supporting my channel and my Instagram page. We have crossed 75,000 audience on both Instagram and on YouTube. So thanks for that. And I hope you're looking after yourself and your loved ones. I'll see you in the next vlog. Bye.